2023 and we welcome him back the one the only the triple m host and former wallaby greg Mato martin joins us Mato, welcome back mate how's the knee oh t- the knee should i tell everyone what happened Go after on. a lifetime of um yeah, last time of getting hit playing rugby and then jumping off roofs as a builder and all the rest of it, I had my a total knee replacement. So instead of in the old days, we just used to see old men doddering around, you know, hobbling around, they now replace your knee with metal and there's all sorts of things inside me, but it was one of the most painful things I've ever done. So I had a pain-killing addiction for four weeks, so the Oof. holidays were tremendous. <laughs> and I can now walk. So, and, and the I, great thing is... As, I mean, when you've come out of hospital, I've had an operation. I can't walk, love. Yeah. That means that you are going to have to wait on me hand and foot. So I bet there are some yeah. credits now that Mrs. Mato is going to be calling on. How do you know this? I, I made just her know my this slave. Thing. Yes. I made her my slave for five weeks, and it's coming home to haunt me. I died through the crutches away only two days ago, and now she's going get up and get it for me like it's getting nasty too it's not good it's not pretty but so so but these the i mean these things work though from this point on pain-free yeah pain-free what they say it's a short rocky road for a long smooth highway so yeah mate there's no pain now and um and i've just got an awful big scar on my knee but that's actually there's three there now yeah mate no life's been all right so nice sunny sunny uh christmas holidays spent on a lounge well, look, I mean, just when you think that Eddie Jones, mate, was going to dominate news all week and we were absolutely loving it. I mean, some, some prime minister goes and resigns and all of a sudden sports off the front page again. What's that about? Well, that's in New Zealand. Uh, Eddie Jones is still rating higher than your prime minister over here, I'm sorry. Because Good to hear. you know what Eddie's done? He's on the front foot. He hasn't moved here. He's still living in London. But he's, I mean, on the front foot and having a crack at rugby league. He said, we're going to steal him, him and him. And Volandis, who runs the NRL, he said, oh, why would any of our players want to go to rugby? It's boring. And Eddie's had a crack back at him. So it's actually, Eddie, without even stepping foot in Australia, has already put rugby back in the newspapers. And I'm always telling you, it's, it's not in the paper anywhere because no one cares and we're losers. He's offering us all hope. That's one thing. Jacinda Ardern, we don't care about our own politicians. Why should we care about your toothy PM? So the, the thing, thing is, mate... Is that is, this is why they got Eddie Jones? No disrespect to Dave Rennie or his coaching credentials, but the man has a personality oh, Dave, of a yeah, raisin no. compared to Eddie Jones, no. doesn't he? he well, no one even knew what Dave Rennie sounded like because he avoided any any media at any stage. What Eddie Jones does, he he doesn't chase it, but they'll chase him because they'll know they'll get a grab for their news or their newspaper report. He's newsworthy and he knows how the game's played, and that's proper experience as opposed to Dave Rennie. Dave Rennie, you're right, had the personality of a chair and um, and he had results that are the worst by any Wallaby coach. Um, and it, and he was a Kiwi. He didn't really care. He yeah. was just taking yeah. a pay yeah. mate. That's the bottom line. you gotta you got to have a bloke from your own country coaching your country. Otherwise, I believe so. It doesn't really. I believe so. Look, and we've had, look, we, you know, we've had, we've had Aussie coaches coaching our cricket team and so forth. But when it comes to rugby, oh, look, yeah. I mean, you, you are, there is no way anyone other than a born New Zealander is ever going to coach the All Blacks. Look, I just don't think That's you right. feel it otherwise, mate. I mean, I know Eddie Jones for England and all of that, but I just don't think when it comes down to it, I mean, you're standing there in front of the national national anthem. Does it really mean anything to you? It's more an employment exercise. I, I always believe that. Yeah, that is so true, mate. The, the, the world of and I can understand cricket as well because it's it's a more technical, less passionate, and less emotional game. Whereas rugby, you need to be fully invested. And unless you're right, unless you've been singing that national anthem your whole life, you don't really give a stuff. You're just going to fulfil the all the details of your contract. So you can get paid each month and everything will be fine. No, nah, you've got to be red hot. And that's Eddie Jones, mate. He's come home. He, As he said, it's like going back. You know, there are people who get married to the same person twice. That's what's happening here. They sacked him in 2005. He hated their guts. But he's back again now because he loves Australia. It doesn't matter about the person who sacked him. It's about Australia. Okay, well, I would say, I would say, the problem would be be if the cattle aren't good enough, and they're probably not. I would say, in the reunited and it feels so good department, that means that I would say Eddie Jones is the Richard Burton Australian rugby of the Liz Taylor. Ah, yes, yes, that would be correct. We've had a number of, we've had two goes together, as in Richard Burton, but Elizabeth Taylor had many, many, many men. Um, That's Australian rugby, and we've been done over. 
Listen, what he does, what every footy... You think about footy codes, whether it's rugby league or AFL, whatever in this nation, or rugby union or NFL, anything. What every footy fan needs is hope, and that's what Eddie Jones delivered. Because with Dave Rennie, we kept on getting the same thing. A bloke who couldn't pick the right team, who wouldn't pick combinations to stick with. All right, he offered us no hope. We just went, oh, we're stuffed. We'll cup you. We're not going to go anywhere. All of a sudden, it's energised all those rugby fans I tell you about, the casual rugby fans, they're going, hold on, Eddie's coming back. He's a, The bloke's a winner. Wherever he goes, he wins. He's back in charge of the Wallabies. So all rugby fans have got hope, and that's what the Australian rugby, Australian um, Rugby Australia are pinning their hopes on. Triple M, a Brisbane a breakfast host, a bloke show talking blokes things. Greg Martin with us on the platform. How are your Bronx going to go this year? We had the first Warriors media session yesterday, mate. And look, it's so good at this time of the year because you go out there, there's no real curly or trick questions to ask. No one's really hammering them because they've just given up and been pantsed 40 points by South or whatever. It's all happy yeah. la-la stuff. And so at this time of the year, as far as Warriors fans goes, we've won the comp, mate. It is our year. No one's lost a game yet. Everybody's in with a big chance and everyone's bigger and stronger and faster and it's not for another, what, four weeks now or three weeks. Three weeks now until uh, the whips are cracking. The positivity around the place is <sighs> sensational. Go on. Despite the fact that they... Yeah, so listen, you know there's a new club, don't you? Dolphins, yeah. they're also in Brisbane. So we've now got two clubs who'll probably be in the bottom half of the ladder. Oh. Um, yeah, mate, they... Well, yeah, they've got a bunch of ageing stars. If Wayne Bennett can pull this off, he truly is the super coach with the Dolphins. So, yeah, I don't hold up much hope, but I don't want to talk NRL until it kicks off. Anyway. Okay, well, well, Actually, Seven's on in Hamilton. I'll be watching. You know, I'll be watching all weekend. Seven's in Hamilton. Is, is that... Hold any interest for no, you guys? No, no, I've got to this, is, this is this is this is it sticks in the craw. It used to be Hong Kong and Wellington oh. were these the two tournaments. This is the last one I to be love held. Wellington. Yeah, this is the last one to be held in New Zealand. They have killed the goose. They laid the golden egg. The fun police came along, mate, and decided that people That's were right. actually enjoying themselves too much. And there's a couple of people yep. urinating, a couple of people fornicating. And we're not going to have it. And all of those people who got it banned. Don't turn up now and watch it because the rugby's been played, mate. They, they, go, they go back to banning plastic bags in the supermarket and trying to construct another cycle lane so that it kills all the car parks outside of businesses. That is New Zealand at the moment. That is why we're saying, thanks, Jacinda. Enjoy your job at the UN. You've left us with rising crime, okay. stuffed interest rates, high petrol prices, cost okay. of living. What have you done for us lately, love? Hey, let's talk tennis for a second. Rafa and Murray. Rafa, yes, I'd love to. Go, Rafa and Murray. Oh. Murray hobbling about the court last night like Greg Martin with his bloody knee injury, mate. This guy plays up to it and plays the crowd like no one else. I didn't realise you'd been watching it, mate. I've been transfixed by the tennis because I was a tennis player when I was young. Andy Murray, 35 years of age. He played a five-hour match two nights ago. He fronts up against a fresh 26-year-old, that cock and arc is Kyrgios's best, mate. And you're going, right, eh? Oh, that'll be the end of Sir Andy Murray. Good on you, mate. You're 35. You've had two knee, two hip replacements. Your ankles are shot. You look like an old drunk stumbling up to the bar to get a drink. Good on you. You're a champion, mate. You made your 63 million. Why don't you bugger off home? And all of a sudden, do you know that match finished this morning at five minutes past 4 a.m.? Brilliant. Brilliant. And you go... Who are those people who oh, stuck around till then? And B, how are the ball boys and girls still awake at 4 a.m. in the morning? That was incredible. What, what I witnessed this morning was just extraordinary. And Andy Murray going, they said, how did you do it? He said, well, I train hard and I've got a heart, a big heart. That's all he said. It was incredible. Five hours and 50 minutes of tennis at the, the top level. Bloody, bloody tremendous. That's and did you see what happened in the Djokovic match? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Well? Oh, yeah, yeah. Just Is another... that not ironic, Paul, that he complained about members of the crowd who were taunting him and it was for Where's Wally characters? Like, when you when you when when they asked the umpire, they asked him, say, so point them out, and he goes, oh, there's one up there. There's He actually was able to point out four Where's Wally's in the crowd. I thought that was very funny when the police arrested four men dressed as Where's Wally. All right, identify? let's leave it with this in and, 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 and think about this because I'm going to revisit yes. this quote from here on in right until that Rugby World Cup starts. Will the All Blacks win the Rugby World Cup? And if not, who will? Uh, I believe France will win their home uh, World Cup. Uh, Australia will beat New Zealand in the semi-finals and play France in the final and just get pipped.